Hey there, got something I'm pretty excited about today. Uh, one of a few new sisters models announced with the release of their ninth codex. Probably the model I was most excited about. Uh, named version of the Paragon War Suits. The Abyss Sanctorum of the Adeptus Rotas Morvan Ball. I have one here today I'm going to assemble. Uh, I have yet to open this, so this may be a uh, bit of a learning curve for me to get it done, but with how great this, uh, the sisters' kits in general have been, I uh, I don't think this will be too bad, and especially named characters having no war gear options. So that'll be pretty quick. We'll go ahead and get into it. See if I can get in here without tearing the box up too bad. Not a particularly large kit. I'm not expecting a model much bigger than say a penitent engine or a mortifier. Uh, let's see what we got in here. Games Workshop's really been uh, on top of it with these kits lately. Sisters of Battle already being one of the newest armies. Almost entirely new sculpts. Uh, and really I don't see that changing with newer pieces. Not particularly involved here. Looks like we've only got one sprue to deal with. Uh, these leg joints, little round bits, pieces here. These should look fairly familiar to anyone that's watched any other videos on Sisters of Battle. The mortifiers, uh, heavy bolter ammo cases. And it's something, you know, something nice that comes with these named characters that you're really only going to have one of are the little pieces of basing that just come with it. Let's see if I can get a good shot of that up here. Maybe down here on the hand cam. Got a bunch of nice little skulls. Things like that to base your model on. And you're only going to have one, so it doesn't become an eyesore, uh... I think I've expressed my dislike before of pieces like uh, your Harlequins that come standing on something. It just sort of pulls away from the model a little, I think. But on named characters like this, it's great. You're going to have one. It really helps the model pop uh, and saves you from having to come up with basing yourself. So let's take a look at these instructions. Got a table of contents. We got a base. The variants are as follows. We have with and without helmet. Uh, anybody that's watched my prior videos knows we will be building the with helmet variant because I cannot paint faces. Well, I guess that's not totally true. I would prefer to not paint faces. So, color-coded instructions. So, let's get started with our pieces here. We only have the one sprue, so this should be fairly quickly going. Looks like they did not waste any space on this sprue sheet. Really worked hard to get it all packed onto one. I'm sure as a cost savings measure, but for assembly, that's also uh, really convenient. It's always nice to not have to bounce between sprues. Let's get our piece number eight here. Someday they will use a numbering system that I understand. I'm sure there's some kind of order to it that I just don't get. We'll do five and six. That's our number six. These look like a very ornate version of the arm joints that we've seen before on the Mortifier's Penitent Engines. Number five should be right next to it. What are we even looking for here? There we go. Two and three.
three, two. I'll have to consult the box art. This looks like a uh, maybe a Vox caster of some sort. Fits in well with the Abbas's role as a battlefield commander. Oh yeah, just great. The detail. Oop. <laughs> The detail on some of these newer pieces is just phenomenal. Let's see if I can get the the camera to focus on that here. The front piece with the missiles already built in. Just gorgeous. Little Soror toss across the front of the armor. We'll go ahead and get all our pieces for the first uh, first page put together here. We need 26. And 27. Oh, there it is. Very small, way up in the corner. The only downside to using models that are vaguely human scale in a space marine scale universe is absolute diminutive size we need number 24 it's a little arm here we go all of the Imperium's technology and they have to pilot these suits these Paragon war suits with RC car controllers But that's okay. Uh, hardest part, it's this small. We're gonna get in here, trim these up very delicately. really pay some close attention here Make sure we get all these little bits it's really ideally you would take this kind of time with every model you assembled to make sure you've got it just how you want it But if you're the type of person that normally doesn't, maybe, you know, take the little extra time on your named characters. You don't want the pinnacle of your army to be rolling up to the battle with sprue seams and little bits sticking off the end. That piece turned out okay. Knock the chaff back off of our exacto knife here. This piece I'm gonna have to be very careful with because you can just feel how thin it is. This is very realistically pushing the limits of how small you can make a uh, bit without being too small and risking it being damaged just from outside stress. 
you know, they're, they're not going to implode from atmospheric pressure, but get it too small and one wrong move might bend it a little too far. Oop. I got a little much out of that arm. That's okay, though. Nothing a little paint won't cover up. So let's see here. Okay, we're good to go there. Let's find our safety cap. And let's get some tunes going. Have our glue at the ready. There we go. So we're going to start putting these two together. Nice and easy. Just a little bit of glue here. Model this detailed. I don't want to run the risk of... Oops. Getting too much glue on it. It's squeezing out of the seams. And then ruining all the fine, fine detail they worked so hard to implement. So, as usual, let's go ahead and make sure that we're... Dry fitting before we put them together. Got some nice little guiding nibs. Fits there. Very nice eagle uh, angel. I say eagle. Very angelic piece for our arm. We'll see how that fits together shortly. We have another one here. So sisters, I think these function as pauldrons. Yes. Or the back of the sister's arms. Need to dry fit this one. Oh, excellent. So we want to make sure. Facing like that. Come across like this. Now I'm only worried here because this back piece, oh, I think I see what they've done here. Yep. Our two tabs are actually very slightly different in size. It's probably going to be impossible to tell at this distance, but this piece only fits in here like this. One tab is just barely too big the other way. Okay, let's go ahead and attach these. So we have our bit here, angel sits here. So this needs to go right here. Dry fits in nice and snug. Just like that. We spin around, we got another angel. It's like that. Already coming together quite nicely. Very similar uh, top design to the Penance engine of, uh, what did they change the name to? Engine of Repentance.
back. Attach this here. Oh, and it feeds right up into the arm. Let's make sure we get a little glue there. I was wrong. That is not a Vox caster. That is a power plug. This bit here is going to go right up against the front. So we dry fit it. Let's just get it right on there. Come together quite nicely. You can already see just based on the size of this piece here where the head's going to go. This is not going to be a a large scale model which is fine that's supposed to be one of the draws to things like sisters of battle is uh, that you're not playing as superhumans oh let's figure this one out this guy sits like this there should be a little nib oops this would be a bad piece to drop off the desk. Ooh, that's a bit of a rough one. Okay, let's do this arm first. How does it want that in there? that and then the other piece is gonna go right on that yeah let's do the arm first that wants to sit down like that we'll get a little glue on our cable here to help it stick and you can kind of see right in there in our little socket right above the cable here there's a tiny little round bit for our supporting exoskeleton to fit so let's see if we can get this in here gotta be very careful about Getting too much glue anywhere else. There we go. Took a little bit of uh, finessing, but we got that on there. So now we do the other one looks to be about the same. I think this arm sticks a little more forward. It's supposed to be the arm she's pointing out with. So we are going to go like that. Oh. I felt something give on the other side there. Ah, there we go. What gave? Okay. No, we are good. Fit right in there. There's a nice little hole for this cable for our RC joystick to go. And then this guy fits. Do you fit? Okay, let's try this one the right way. Still dry enough, we can get it out of there. Just tiniest bit of glue. Cable 
that goes above and over. Cable. Exoskeleton bit. Okay. Now we should be able to get all three of these right in where they want to go. So let's find out. Hey, hey. There we go. We are all set. All our bits right in. Looks about right how we're supposed to. I think we're good to go there. We'll go ahead and dispose of the detritus into our convenient tiny trash can. And let's move on to the next page. Let's start getting into the meat of things here. Bit number nine. Bit number 10. Bit 15. Fourteen will allow us to connect our heavy bolter. <laughs> I don't know about this one. Might not have enough. Yeah. Not quite enough model there yet. 14 will connect our heavy bolts. Number 11, our wonderful shield here. Ties the model in a little with the, uh, I think they're called Sacrosancts. The new uh, shield troops for the sisters. Haven't picked any up yet, but they do look interesting. Always neat to see a sort of uh, mace and shield approach in your game about futuristic gunfights. Which is fine, you know, really, in all truth, it's not like we haven't seen melee units. Custodians with shields are definitely one of the better uh, better examples of that. And I'm sure you could keep going back. Space Marines with Thunder Hammers and Storm Shields. Much like the tendency of animals to evolve to crabs you know here in 40k everything just naturally uh, progresses to being a foot troop with a melee weapon and a shield move the mic a little further away from my head we want the other no this is not part of the leg Some sort of connector. 33. And really, we're almost done with the model. We don't need to pace ourselves here. So let's just go ahead and get all of this done at once. Six. Ooh, the decorated shin guard. Thirty 
seven. Lots of cloth billowing off. Legs will be ready. Number 20. That'll go on number 18, which is the gigantic arm. And then on to number 19. This enormous spear. Uh, I believe it's named. It'll be in the back of the book somewhere. 21 and 22. So let's set that down. Get out our trusty X-Acto knife and get to trimming. Really gotta get that one flat because we know we're gonna have something sitting up against it. Not right now, kitty cat.
That's always nice. I really prefer when they don't put any of the the pore lines, connector lines, on the actual blade part of the weapon there because it's so hard to get it looking better. I really struggle with I really struggle with uh, getting it to not take a chunk out of the blade. Not right now, kitty. Maybe in a little bit. I can't. Oh, hello. Hi. Okay. Wrong answer, I guess. It is time to hold the cat. So, drag fit, that's gonna go together just like that. Oh wow, that goes together so well that I almost didn't need to glue it. But we're going to glue it just for posterity's sake. That's going to go right on already. Attaches to the back, the side with our ammo crate. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, that needs to come back a little. Okay, I was the fool. So we can see here, we got that little power conduit. Oh, come on, focus. And that power conduit lines up with the little bit across the bottom of the bolter there. Everything worked out in the end. So that will tell us not only where to put the arm, but where specifically the gun needs to rest. In this case right here. It's gonna go like that. We have our ammo belt, it's gonna twist. This bit probably sticks right up in, like that. Oop. Yep, that looked like it precisely. Let's get our glue in there. And while that's still wet, we're going to get the other piece. Specifically, so that we can get this on here while it's still wet. Oops. Give that a quick rotate so that we don't have five bullets facing the wrong direction. There we go. Another nice heavy bolter line. Get some use out of the hand cam here. I don't know how much better that's gonna be. Pretty good there. Now we start on our shield. This is gonna fit square into the front of the bolter. Just like that. We got a little Sanctum Prioris note on the front of our shield. Got to assemble the very tip of the bolter. Oh, 
This is another one I should have dry fitted first. Okay, got it right first try. Line those up, get the barrel nice and even. And then we're going to put this square into the front of the shield. Not too bad looking. Now we have shoulder plates. I guess in this case, a shoulder plate. Ooh wee, almost bad. Let's go ahead and get these together first. So that it's got a little bit of grip. And that's just going to go right there. So we're going to put a little bit across the top here where it's going to rest. And then just a tiny dab on the bits of those cables. So there we're good there. It'll start on this leg. there we got this nice cloth piece that fits some sort of way Ooh, that feels fits really good in there too good in fact to not be where it's supposed to go this piece together some sort of leg couple not today tiny pieces okay give my hands a second for the glue to dry It's right in there. Some really good sheer faces on these models. So that goes there. This other cloth piece goes in the front. We have a notch, so we're going to try dry fitting like this. Ooh, that almost snaps right in there. Very good. Leg. Now we start on the other leg. Same thing, this bit goes around the back side of it. Just gonna have some way that it fits together that just makes too much sense. Yeah, right there. Got a little divot. Oops. Just like that cloak piece is going to fit across the front. Ooh. First things first though. Do a little more cleaning on that. Uh, 
I always prefer a little rough discoloration to sticking out because once the paint goes on, the discoloration will disappear. The untrimmed part will not. Oh yeah, fits right across the front. There's a little tab just like the other side. those together. I got a little glue on the front there. That's okay though. Seven. Now our legs are going to go together. Uh, just like that. Get a nice, very thin line of glue down the side. And then a little bit of a glob there on this sheer bit. Uh, we didn't need glue on the on the robe for sure. It is. <laughs> Supposed to pull apart there in the center. That's okay though. We are okay. So you can see we got a tiny hand, tiny hand grabbler. That's going to fit just like that. This tiny hand has a little tab. We're just going to get right up on that tab. And then power cord here will fit across. Ooh, this is another good one to have dry fit, but getting a little overzealous here because of these tabs. Just like that. Fit that into the power opening. We have our shield. That's going to be our right hand arm. That's okay. We're going to make it work. Ah, okay. Nibs on the end. There's why I had messed up. Okay. Yeah, that looks right. Perfect. Spent all that time troubleshooting that hand for nothing. So, let's learn our lesson here dry fit those to make sure we know what we're looking for. Another shoulder pad. And we're going to go right here. Go ahead and put the shoulder pad on. Connect the wires to the underside. And then put the back on. There we go. We're going to set those down to rest for a minute. So we got our legs. Top half. Just put little Space Marine legs on the bottom of it. Step we should have seen coming. We combine them. So that was not a leg connector as I as I had originally thought. That is a waist connector. So while that's drying, 
we have our choice of heads. Let's see. Let's get the focus in here. We have three options. An angry, a neutral, and a helmet. As always, I am a helmet type of guy. So we'll get that ready. Let's go ahead and get our nice little base piece out. So that one's going to sit like that on our base. We have our head. So let's go ahead and do the easy one first. Just a little bit of glue there. Oop, try not to unravel our legs in the process despite their best efforts altogether not too bad pretty menacing model all things considered for a human <sighs> those legs are just not wanting to cooperate and the model put this together Oh no, did I take off a, a peg? I think I did. There's a square peg on the front of the foot there. You can see a ghost of where I shaved it down to be nice and smooth. Don't, uh, don't get rid of that guy. What is your deal? It's okay though. We still have a pretty general idea of where we're going. That one foot goes here. The other foot only has a couple of couple of plausible spots to go. Sits on the base quite nicely. I would imagine she sits even more nicely with uh, the pegs in place. Now that that's starting to set, we're going to get her on there. Just do a nice fair bit of glue right around the flat bits. Her on there, we'll give her a little bit of an offset so that she's centered on the base, and there we have it. We have some bits here in the back the painting guides what she's supposed to look like, some tips for detail, really nice painting done, and a unit sheet. Pretty good stuff. So, pretty good kit, all things considered. I can't complain. Uh, she is named version of this kit. Lots of cool options. Really looking forward to that one as well. They'll line up quite nicely alongside Morvin here. So, until next time, thanks for tuning in.